Hello everybody, my name is Markus Eichinger. I'm head of mobile services at Wirecard and today I would like to talk to you about trends in retail payment that we see from a payment service provider perspective. First, let me give you, give you a short heads up to Wirecard. Wirecard is a quite unique combination of a technology company and a financial service company. Um, we do a lot of projects for um, mobile network operators in Europe where we build technology solutions such as wallet solutions, uh, processing solutions, even mobile apps. But we also act uh, as a card issuing bank here. And we are able to issue cards to our German and UK banking license. But besides this issuing business, we're also one of the leading payment service providers. And we do a lot of business with retailers, especially in Asia, and from there we see a lot of trends currently coming into the field of retail from e-commerce. And I would like to talk about these trends with you today. So let me start with a short quote of Syriac Roding. Uh, Syriac is CEO of a very successful US startup called Shopkick, and I, I guess pretty much everybody should know Shopkick. They are basically a loyalty startup with more than 10,000 local installs. That makes them one of the most successful uh, brick and mortar solutions that is out there. And what he says is that the retail industry is going to transform more in the next five years than it has transformed into the, from the last 50 to 100 years. Well, and I think that is a pretty sound statement because in the last 100 years, we got from small mom and pop shops, individual tailor shops, to large supermarket chains and multinational businesses like Inditex that have completely changed the way our inner cities look. Of course, everybody asks the question, do we want to continue like this? Um, do we want to shop such, uh, such like this in, in these situations in the future? And I personally have been in, in, in kind of these situations where you just wanted to go away because it was, was just a, such a bad experience. Now, there are a lot of people saying, this will all go away. The brick and mortar doesn't have a chance. Everything will just be sold online. And of course, you pretty much don't have to look at numbers to see the success of e-commerce uh, these days. You just have to look actually in front of post offices. People are queuing to send their stuff back. So um, maybe pure e-commerce also is not the perfect solution. And indeed, retailers are now rethinking their strategies. They are embracing new technologies like HCE, NFC, BLE. We've heard a few names. I just dropped some more. Um, but these technologies really help them to regain control over the customer relationship process. And there are so many technologies out there that I would like to sum it up in three interesting trends that we have identified. The first one on the merchant side um, is called Anywhere Payment Acceptance. The second one on the user side we call Ubiquitous Payment. On the third, more concerning the technology and infrastructure side, we call from legacy to platform. Let me start with the merchant side first. Um, if you're um, the most annoying that the situation that you can be in if you shop somewhere is you go into the store, you grab your goods, you have a good user experience, then you go to the cashier and so you see those huge queues. In this kind of situation, mostly we just want to drop your goods and go away. So that is why for, for most merchants, priority number one is kill a checkout. They hate losing sales. They want to keep the people in the store because they know if you are in the store, it is very likely that you convert. And luckily enough, there are now technologies to enable that. One of these technologies is called mobile point of sale, MPOS. And MPOS has originally been designed for small and medium-sized businesses. But this is a technology that is now used by large corporations. If you're in New York and you go to Macy's or you go to Nike, a Nike store or basically to any Apple store, you will be able to pay right at a sales clerk. There is no need that you have to queue separately. You just get your goods, pay, and you're able to leave the store. And that is a very good user experience. And that is why we see this trend is even developing further. The pin pad and the smartphone, smart device, they become one. And we call that MPOS 2.0. These are new devices entering the market, like the one here from Point, a US company, or even large European players like Winkor Nixdorf. And they also have the, the new Albert device here at the fair. And, and 
these devices are very clever because they separate the operating system in two areas. One is a secure one for payment processing. This, this one is inaccessible, but the other one you can access. And this makes these devices the first devices ever where you as a developer can develop apps for a local point of sale. Well, talking about terminals, there's always a question of cost because terminals are quite expensive and also the, the other de devices we just saw, they are quite expensive. Um, so you might ask the question, why do we need a terminal infrastructure at all? And indeed, that's what Apple paid back in 2012 with Easy, Easy Pay, where you just had to log into the store Wi-Fi, scan your products, pay through the app, and then you could leave the store. And in my opinion, in-app payments, um, and we talked about it a lot today, can offer the best user experience in retail. The technology is there for a user developer if you build such solutions. These uh, technologies are called tokenization, hosted payment pages, reference payment, and they help you as a developer to, to build this kind of user experience without falling under PCI, DSS scope, and, and so on. So when does it make sense to use in-app payments? It always makes sense if you have a natural user story during that you are able to create the data that you need to conduct the payment. And the company that does this very well is MyTaxi. They started as the ordering company, everybody knows them probably. So, but then later on they added payment and this perfectly makes sense because they have the trip details, they have the personal details and so they just add the payment information later on and create a super user experience. Kate Spade is a designer fashion company in New York and they have a pretty interesting concept called window shopping. And I want to talk about this today because they combine various trends like same day delivery, e-commerce or mobile checkouts and physical retail stores to create a great user experience. They have a video that I would like to show you. Now that is the one from Kate Spade. Um, now talking about retailers embracing new technologies, we should also have a look at e-commerce companies and re the retail, but with processes intelli and intelligence uh, from e-commerce companies. And the largest player here, Amazon, is already opening up physical stores in the US. But they are all also experimenting with smart vending machines where you can get anything from a, a simple power plug for $20 to a Kindle Fire HDX. And now imagine what can happen if a company like Amazon with the processes and intelligence capabilities like Amazon enters the physical retail market. Warby Parker. Warby Parker originally started out as a tech company in the US, selling high quality designer glasses at reasonable prices. So, and they are very successful with this concept and now they are entering retail. They go into top locations like Fifth Avenue, New York and so, but they go there with a clear strategy and thinking of e-commerce. So what they claim is they want to have the same amount of data when you shop in their stores than they are used to have when you shop online. And technologies they are using is our, our apps, uh, Bluetooth recognition, RFID product recognition, and they use this technology in order to create this unique holistic experience that they usually could also could only create online. Now the second trend I would like to talk today um, about is uh, ubiquitous payment. Ubiquitous payment means payment anywhere on any device at an, and at any time. And of course the leading example here is Apple Pay where you just have to add your payment details once to the smartphone and from then you are able to pay with your smartphone, you pay, can pay with your Apple Watch seamlessly without any additional configuration. 
Well, what is interesting is that the technology concepts behind Apple Pay exist for quite a while and many people or many companies are using them. The name you have to remember here is host card emulation. We've heard that a, a quite a, a, few, a few times today. So imagine you are a bank who wants to issue a virtual credit card on a smartphone. You have to store sensitive payment information somewhere. Um, you can either, of course, do it in a plastic card, but if it comes to a smartphone, things become a bit more complicated. So you could either do that on, on, on the SIM card. Um, this, of course, makes you dependent on the mobile network operator to distribute those SIM cards. There is also a problem called SIM seeding, because these SIM cards are more expensive than the regular ones. This is a chick it becomes a chicken and egg problem, um, because people are not having those SIM cards, even if they would want to use it. So this is a huge problem. Okay, second, you could use the secure element on the handset, if there is a secure element on the handset. This again, as a bank, makes you dependent on the handset manufacturer. And either way, this may case by case jeopardize your business model as a bank because these guys eventually want to get paid for uh, allowing you storing their data, your data on their secure element. So that is why HCE is such a clever move because this makes you independent of both parties. You just store, store credit card data are now stored in a secure storage in the cloud and the only thing that is exchanged between the cloud and the payment um, and, and the smartphone are payment tokens. And payment tokens are good for one payment to a certain amount. So this provides a very high level of, of security. And we've heard a lot of that in, in the talks already today. But to show how far you can go by using a software only payment solution like HCE, um, we uh, implemented this technology into a variable device, turning a smart band into an actual payment instrument. And I would like to show you a short video how that, how that works. Now, with the Wirecard Smart Band, we, we just want to show what you can do by using software-only technologies. And we think that is only the beginning of a trend uh, called ubiquitous payment, which means regardless of the device or the payment instrument, you can pay anywhere with, an, with a device that is able to interact with the, with the POS infrastructure. The third and last trend I would, men would like to mention today um, is more related to the infrastructure side, and we call it from legacy to platform. If you develop applications for the local point of sale, there is always the problem of infrastructure. So first, of course, you could build your own infrastructure. That is quite expensive. Second, you could integrate with in into what is actually already there, and that usually is too much of a hassle. Because if you look at what is actually there, these devices are just not made for any kind of integration. Uh, as a developer, you need SDK, API, you want real-time data processing, you want sandboxes. These devices are not offering it. Um, they are treated in a never touch a running system manner. And to be honest, most of the time, it's better to just forget about integrating than even to try. There are solutions in place, like the one here from Shopkeep, and there are many more. Um, smart iPad-based solutions uh, in the cloud where, where they, and they have platform solutions where you can, as a merchant, just use third-party software like ERP software, like emailing tools, like loyalty software seamlessly without having to do a costly integration. However, these devices still form, form a fraction of the market because we're in the POS industry, um, the sales cycles are more measured in decades than in years. And so we'll see how quickly they will, uh, um, how quickly this will pick up. However, the problem that you face as a developer exists now, and that is why we have developed a platform called Connected POS. And Connected POS is a middleware platform between the POS layer and the application layer. 
it features a standard connector device, which is able to talk standard um, protocols, um, uh, POS protocols like ZVT or OPI. This is even able to read out the printer stream in order to extract data from the POS system, send it to a high-speed data processing layer, and make it available through SDKs and APIs. Now, if you as a developer want, want to build an app for the local point of sale, the only thing you have to do is to integrate the connected POS API, distribute your app in the merchant app store, and you're ready to distribute it in a network without the need for any additional hardware integration. Let me show you a short video how this works. Wirecard has developed a complete platform that allows retailers to collect data that has so far been inaccessible to them. The connected POS platform centers around a smart, network device that is plugged between POS and receipt printers. The connector platform seamlessly connects a multitude of data sources, such as POS systems, beacon platforms, mobile wallet, or loyalty programs. The device communicates with the terminal, beacon platforms, and connected POS data storage. The platform collects and analyzes transactional information about payments, customer presence, and purchases. Extracted basket data is used to further enrich the purchase profile of the customer. This allows merchants to offer a better customer experience and service, which directly results in higher revenues. Revealing users' shopping patterns, brands' affiliation, products' affinity, and many more. This data feeds back into the Wirecard loyalty platform, allowing brands and merchants to further refine their advertising. Customers use the mobile app to discover offers and share them with their friends. With connected POS, offers and coupons to customers become highly relevant and effective. Connected POS enables payment for all devices with integrated contactless payment capabilities. Relevant offers are displayed on the mobile app and can be instantly shared with friends. Wirecard. Connected POS. So this really solved the problem that developers and merchants face when they want to develop apps for, for the local business. Um, Connected POS will be available later this year, and if you need any more information, please drop me a note. Happy to send them to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.